Where do you feel like you're at in your life right now? Oh, good question. Where do I feel like I'm at in my life? Uh, a returning to self, period. I've been thinking so much, reflecting a lot. So it's funny that we're doing this interview because I, be, I literally think about this question. Not exact, those exact words, but who am I? What do I like to do? What do I want next? What's, what am I craving in my soul? As people call it, I, what is my core like? What's like super essential to me? I think I'm really good at um, executing things, doing things, like problem solving. I think what I need better help with is like wisdom, which is, comes with time. And I think the wisdom is just, is where you put that energy to execute and do and like manifest things. But I th I'm, wanting, I'm wanting to be, at, in this point in my life, more selective on where I put my time, energy, and effort because I think when I commit to things and it's my intention, I can make things happen. It's just where I want to put that intention. So I've been spending more time reflecting um, and trying to understand myself and what that translates to in terms of like what I want in this life and how I want to feel in this life. Um, so basically right now I'm being the CEO of my life and being strategic with my vision um, based on what I want and care about as a person, me, myself, not as the, the fencer necessarily, but just as a person. How would you say your, your kind of uh, self-image has changed in these past years? That's a great question. Uh, my self-image, in terms of how people see me, how see, I see myself. I'd say how you see yourself, because mm -hmm. that's your lived experience. Mm -hmm. My self-image, hmm. I think for a long time I've been, I haven't thought about my identity much. It's just been very stable. Um, I do fencing, I love fencing, I'm training, I'm traveling, competing, and that's, that was my life for 20 years. So now that I've left that life of competing and like training and preparing to compete, all in, in quads, like in four year spans, so like each Olympics every four years, so you know there's a cycle. So now that I'm, I've exited the cycle, it's like, well, what do I do with my time now? So yes, my identity is like, is, I wouldn't say it's shattered, but a big piece of how I spent my time is now gone. And like, it's not only how I spend my time, it's how I value things. So like, there's a lot of value placed in winning, being an athlete, um, and not losing. <laughs> like, I like to win, but I feel like I really don't like to lose. So, you know, I, th I feel myself needing to evolve from that mind because it, it's, it's not necessarily conducive to the real world, especially with the work I do now around youth and development. So it's, I'm evolving my self image and like my value system a bit. Yeah, it seems like a big change, you know. It's, yeah, it, it is, is redefining yourself. Yeah, it's 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 a big, big, big change. Um, responsibility wise, um, how I spend my days wise, um, how many people I'm speaking to wise. I'm not really an extrovert, so it's a challenge <laughs> to speak to people all the time and to like to host every practice. It's like I'm hosting. It's I'm curating the experience with the coaches, but. A lot of people, a lot of the students are here, have been attracted to it because of me. I've introduced them to fencing, they've seen me in my career, or like they know someone who's seen me or something like that, and I've, I'm their point of reference for entering this world of fencing. So it's like every time I'm here, I have to like be up, or that's what it feels like. What was the mindset like, the deep competition mindset? Is it like tunnel vision? Is it like you're just singularly focused? It depends on the day. If I'm fencing well, I'm really relaxed. I'm relaxed, I'm having fun. It is tunnel visioned in, in that like I'm not distracted by anything except 
what I hit on last, what I got hit on, and filling in the puzzle pieces of, okay, this is missing, I need to take one smaller step here, and then run away, and then give my arm at this moment, and then she's gonna do this, and I can't get hit on this again. And it's just so much, your stream of thought when you're competing and you're in the zone is so singularly like, fencing, not fencing, results fencing, like I need to win this bout or I need to get to eight points or I need to get to seven or whatever I need to score, I need to make the top 16 today to, to make the team. That's not fencing, that's, that's distraction. Like when you're in the zone, it's like, it's, it's that, it's all the game, the game of fencing and like how you're building on your game and creating. I always like to think of myself as a creator on this strip, which is funny. I, I literally, it was one of my like, I have all these mantras I'm a creator is one is one of them because when you're on the strip, it's you create situations that are in your advantage. Uh, so yeah, you're you're creating when you're in the zone. That's what it feels like an intense competition, and then that's like the strategic part. And then the emotional part is like trying to overcome fear because doing these executing this plan is takes a lot of courage and being brave. And so like. You have to pair that strategy with the confidence to get it done the right way. Um, and then the mental part of it is, that's kind of the emotional regulation part. And then the mental part is staying focused and like keeping that rhythm of like intently thinking about the game, um, not being distracted by other things, um, not being distracted by the win. The winning, winning is distracting. It's not like, Thinking you want to win is not how you're going to score a touch, you know? So it's, it's a lot of things, balancing a lot of things. Um, being the physical part is tough, but that comes in practice, you know? You develop that in your strength and conditioning, like fencing a lot of bouts, doing a lot of competitions, developing the endurance. But I mean, it's something you still deal with when you're on the strip competing. So it's like all of these things tugging at you, and it's like, ah! <sighs> and then when you score a point, it's like, oh, thank God, 14 more to go. <laughs> but really, you can't think of it like that. It's just one at a time. So, yeah, it's, it's fun. It's a great challenge. I love competing. I don't, I don't really, but I do love it. So I have a love-hate relationship. And that's when you're feeling good. When you don't feel good, it's like, how do I get to this place? So it's kind of, it's like, it's really itchy. It's like... Oh, I want to get back to the zone where I'm like just flowing, but I'm having trouble and I'm having this blockage. And I think a lot of it from what I've learned is, is just like your life, just being unsettled in your life, period. Just not having peace in your life, um, having like unhappiness in your life. It does not help you fence well at all. It's like one of the most important things I think people don't talk about a ton. But to perform well, you have to be happy because then you're relaxed and they come to you because you've been training forever. When, you, when you're when you tight, when you're stressed or things are bothering you, like in a substantial way that you're like bothered, it's, it's hard to fence. How would you maintain that kind of mindset throughout your daily life? Is that something mm -hmm. that you would consciously think about? You know, it's funny because I have sensation, it's a sensation. I have sensations of having that like intensity sometimes. And it's the same fleeting, fleeting sensation. And it's funny when I have it, I'm like, wow. It's like, I, I remember feeling like this in competition. That's cool. It doesn't happen often. It doesn't happen often. Like most of my days, it's like me pushing myself to get things done. It's like, oh, I'm tired. I don't want to do this. All right, just do it, just do it. I'll get distracted, I'll be on edge. Okay, just do it, just do it, get off Instagram. And then there's days when it's like, I'm getting this done right now, and I'm just on the computer. Yeah, so it's like, you know, it's that's how my life in competition was too. It's like finding that rhythm, that motivation. It's so internal, it's just, it's, like I said, it's hard to force. I take things, you know, if I, ha if I have that feeling that day, it's amazing. What about the, the atmosphere that you grew up training in, do you think was able to get you to that point? Like what factors were at play? It's like, it seems mm -hmm. like the coaching. Yeah, I would say two, two people. Bucky, who is my coach, 
was the Olympic coach, and he died recently. Mm -hmm. um, and Peter, on the community side and um, the mission, the mission side of not only sport, like creating pathways and being a like vehicle for character development and like becoming your best self. Not only that, but also doing it with people you love. It's fun doing it like social, you know, it's, it's like a thing we do together. It's something we do supporting each other. Um, it's like you compete, but then you also support your teammates and it's, you have a good time together. So that part of it, the vibes of it um, and like increasing access to it is something Peter heavily influenced. And also my mom. I come from a family of activists, so it's very natural to me. Um, not only activists, activism around um, black empowerment. Yeah, black li liberation. Yeah, so I have a deep, I have a deep rooted history um, there. I think something that Bucky taught me is like, no one can take away like your effort and like the satisfaction you get when your effort, you know, materializes into success and like your dreams, achieving your dreams. So it's the best sensation in life to feel satisfied. And I think, I don't know this, but I can imagine, cause it's, it's not like a permanent state. It's something, you know, you feel ever so often. Um, but I feel like it's like my top sensation. <laughs> um, and I think people have trouble accessing it um, because they don't necessarily have the, the tools to, to know how to get what they want. And so I think Bucky gave me the tools to get what I want. Um, whether it's now, whether it's 20 years from now, whether it's I failed 20 million times to get there, like we were saying, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm just, if I want something done, I'm gonna keep going towards it. Fencing is an individual sport. Like, you're not gonna pass the ball off to someone to do this attack against this Russian fencer who can only get hit on this one attack. Like, you have to learn how to make that happen yourself. You know, you, you have to build your game so solidly that not only do you have like minimal gaps and holes in your game, but also that you're effective in doing your attack, doing your defense, like counterattacking, taking the parry, getting away, like being mobile, all these things. You have to be good at, at all the things to, to be a good fencer. What you learn as you go through fencing, it's like any other thing. You learn how to learn and identify things. And with these bouts, it's like, okay, I know that in some other bout, I've learned that like if this person's really long, keep the distance bigger. So it seems like she's hitting me on a really long attack. I need, I need to open up the distance. So just being able to like identify what you're getting hit on takes a lot of time of like practice and years in the sport. Figuring out what that solution is, is another step. And then like how you execute that solution is another step and then also like having the confidence to execute it in competition is another thing so it's like and then continuously doing that and staying disciplined to your game what you have anticipated will happen and like have set out this plan which is adjustable but you're gonna stick with that um that's that's mental discipline and like developing that discipline is like high level Fencing, yeah, because you can be very capable as a fencer and like know what to do, have the solutions, know how to execute it. And if you stray from your game because you got distracted or stray from your game because you didn't trust it or stray from your game because someone else told you differently and you yourself know that this is what you need to do to win. It's just a lot of things. So fencing is heavily strategic um, and analytical and problem solving um, because you are dealing with someone else on the other side. It's not just you, it's not just swimming, so it's not just the same stroke every time or track where it's like the same. There's someone in front of you, so you have to create every single touch interaction encounter with that person. Um, and that requires, it requires a different set of, it's a different skill set. Fencing's like, a, that's why fencing's like a super special sport because you have all of these variables going on and it's like a, such a balance of things to be great at to be like you know the best at fencing so it's it's a challenge from many angles can you kind of remember what what type of thoughts like if you could imagine like you're in about right now 
Could you kind of like say out loud what would be going through your head? Yeah, I've had really not great bouts too. So like in not great bouts, I would say something that would go on in my head is, it's okay to lose this bout, she's pretty good. Like those are negative thoughts, you know? Um, or self, self-defeating self thoughts. And that's when like, you know, life is a struggle a little bit. There's periods where it was like fencing was easy it seemed like it re wasn't easy I just worked really hard at it and was like in a good mental space and loved to do it and didn't have pressure it was just like mm, this is my thing I love this this is so fun and then when it became more of a job you know it was like oh this is tough I got <laughs> now things are you know on the line or like okay now I have to sh show up I'm gonna miss this team or like I'm not gonna get this opportunity or blah 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 you know, things are dependent on your success and that changes it a little bit. Like you lose the like freeness of it a little bit. Things I would say to myself are like, you're strong, you're capable, you're the champion. Every touch, when, you know, when I'm focused, but you're a creator, like be a student of the game. That's how like you stay in the moment and like problem solve in that moment versus like let your mind wander. It's also just like have fun. And do what I want to do. Fencing's so free. The thing about doing what you want to do on the strip is it's not always the right thing. <laughs> but sometimes I try to have good balance because sometimes I don't want to like be so rigid with like only this is going to work, only do this. You know, I just want to run at you. So I'll just run at you, <laughs> which is not like, you know, it's not always conducive to winning, but in terms of like being free, it was satisfying, so. How did it feel once you worked really hard and achieved, you'd finally achieve the goal that you've been working to say for years, you know, four years, and then you get this, this big achievement, then what does it feel like? I wish they were more like potent or like, I wish they were more visible in my memories but to be honest they come and they go the big moments they come and they go and um i really wish i did more to celebrate them after the olympics they, they say they have this thing called the olympic blues where it's like you've been on such a high for like a month at the olympics like competing meeting p athletes like having fun like doing media all that stuff and then like it just kind of disappears. And so you kind of have this withdrawal from like all of that recognition and excitement. And I really like excitement. Like it's something I really miss in my life. Um, like fencing is really exciting all the time. The sport of fencing is really exciting all the time. The lifestyle traveling all the time is exciting. Um, so yeah, like when the excitement like kind of flattens, it's, it's tough. It's tough and I feel like in those moments you really have to be introspective about like what you want because it's not sustainable like those highs and so you can't like base yourself entirely around like achieving that because it's it's not always going to be there so you really have to sustain like yourself in other moments and like figure out what gives you joy outside of competing and like you know doing well in competition and I kind of had an abrupt flattening of the excitement because I had to retire when my hip like was collapsing a couple years ago so it was a really abrupt stop it's like well what do I want to do now and figuring out like your identity I feel like I picked up from when I was nine years old and I just I've, I feel like I've been having a lot of flashbacks of like when I was in junior high school or when I was in elementary school and I had this emotion that I haven't, you know, I haven't thought of it in a long time because I've had this like blanket, a security blanket of fencing and like being good at fencing. And now I'm just like, oh yeah, I, I do have like an insecurity about this. Or like I do like, I don't like when that happens and now it's happening. Like I'm not good at everything. <laughs> I'm not good at something, you know, it's, that's upsetting, you know? Did, was that something that you had to think about or, I mean, because it seems like for a little while you probably could have done anything, mm -hmm. you know, and I then you, how did you arrive at what you're doing now? I just feel like I didn't care about anything else. 
I just feel like I think something I really know about myself is I love black people or like that, but also I want to do something important with my time. And I've seen, I just, it's just upsetting to grow up in like two worlds completely. So I think I've always carried with me a want to level the playing field um, and give resources in terms of education um, so that people from where I'm from have opportunity to be happy, like a real, a real chance to, to fill their potential and be satisfied with themselves and live fulfilling lives. So I just think they're really cheated out of a lot of things and I don't like that. So that's something I care about. Um, so all these things I just care about, I just, fencing's just the thing I do. So it's where I got started. I do, I wanna, I do wanna like evolve from fencing. Like I want to expand my wings. <laughs> um, but I do, I, I love fencing. Fencing's like my, my first love. What are you excited about now? Excited? I've been trying to figure that out, what I'm excited about. Um, I think that's why I'm reflecting so much. I'm excited about fencing with the kids. That makes me really excited. Yeah, I'm excited for them to start competing and enjoying the sport. I'm excited for them to like fencing, not like fencing. I'm excited for them to love fencing, like to be obsessed with it. Like that's, it's cause it's such a gift to really love something. And fencing is really lovable when you give it the chance. So I'm just really excited for them to get to that stage where they're just like totally obsessed. Um, we're working on it. What advice would you give to people who are trying to find their, their purpose? Hmm. Things you, like your friends or people around you say you're good at, like go towards that. Things you just do because you like it. Like there's no outcome related to the thing. Like there's no money related to it. There's no like networking opportunity. There's no opportunity you just like to do it. Um, spending more time on that. And I think combining, like that can be, you really love food and you cook often um, and maybe you're a writer and maybe like those are two different lanes but maybe you can combine them just what makes sense with the skills that I have and the things I like so that's how I've kind of developed this purpose um, and honestly you can do that all that concocting and it's wrong you don't like it <laughs> like it's just it doesn't make sense for you you don't enjoy it fine but you had an experience and now you know what you don't want now you know what you don't want, so you can go from there. It's like, but I did like this part of it, so maybe you do more of that. I think it's a lot of trial and error. A lot of like, no, 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 no. And then like, okay, maybe a little bit this part. And then you kind of just keep going in that direction. I think that's how, I've, that's how fencing is. It's like, this didn't work, this action did not work, that didn't work, let's try this move your hand a little bit this way and see if that works. No, that didn't work. Like, you know, it's just like a lot of process. I mean, you know, there's periods where I am down, but it's, it's I think I recover well. I hear that about athletes a lot. They bounce back well. I think that's true. That's interesting because I kind of would have guessed that after such a specific focus for so long in your life, and then it's like that part of your life's gone, it would be disruptive. It is, oh, it's very disruptive, Yeah. really disruptive. The value system, I think, is the, the biggest part. I didn't talk about it too much. I talked about, like, the winning part and changing that values. It's very simple things, like, I don't spend an hour of my day doing footwork anymore. I have, I had high value in that, like, and now I don't have that. So it's like, what's important to me? What's important on how I spend my day? Like I know in fencing, footwork's important, point control's important, like watching videos is important, taking your lessons is important, like doing a lot of batting is important, doing your physical conditioning is important, important, cardio, important, all that stuff. Um, so now I'm just like, I had the framework for that. So it's just like 
the framework now is like developing. I don't know it. So it's just like, what, what gives me good value in my life? It's, I have to d redefine it. So that's a challenge. So it's like, do I spend two hours a week spending time with my friends? Or is it five hours? You know, it's like, what, what, what is that? How much value do I place in this, you know, to give me a, a really fulfilling life experience? Two hours a day spending e emails. I did good today. Or if I didn't send any emails, that's not good. <laughs> That's never good, but um, you know, just like what is what does good mean? What does great mean? Like, I don't know. It's it's. I'm still figuring those things out. Like hanging out. Like I didn't hang out much. Like it's like I hang out with fencing people. Like, but I wasn't. I haven't met new people in a long time. I've been around the same people like a lot of my life. I mean, new people here and there, but like you know, not get to know and develop relationships and friendships with new people. So that's something I like and I care about and I think is important. And so I want to do more of that. That has high value in my life now, you know? So that wasn't always the case necessarily, but now, now it is. And I had to find that and realize that that's important to me. So I'm still finding things. It's coming along. I'm two years out now from retirement. I feel like a little better. I feel like I can say I'm like better situating myself. I feel better situated. Still a little unsettled, but I think also just doing things for myself, like finding my apartment, making sure my apartment's tidy, like making sure my clothes are clean. These things, they sound so basic, and they're not basic at all to me. You know why? Because I've spent a lot of my life with people helping me with, with that kind of stuff. So it's like things for myself, paying my bills, like it's. Adult, <laughs> adult life. It's a challenge, um, but I have, I have, I've had better value in that than I have in the past. So that's because I want to be responsible, you know. And I, I recognize that I need to be responsible to do what I do. So it's something I'm working on. Yeah. So it's just I'm just becoming a person. <laughs>